Hey, welcome to Paper Craft Panda. My name is Misty, and I have a little bit of a cold this week, so if my voice sounds weird, that's why. All right, so last week I showed you how to make and mix methyl cellulose with your PVA. Methyl cellulose is organic and it helps extend your PVA. So it thins it out so it's easier to apply and it extends the drying time, which gives you a little more time to reposition things if you need to. Well, after sending out that email, someone asked me a question. They said, hey, okay, that's great, Misty, but when do I use methyl cellulose in PVA and when should I just use standard PVA? That question got me thinking. Yeah, when should you use these? So I went ahead and I ran an experiment. I took out six different types of paper and that paper ranged in thickness from 25 GSM all the way up to 130 GSM. Then I grabbed some binders board about 0.8 thickness. So it is high quality. And I took some standard PVA, no modifications. And I also grabbed some PVA that had been mixed with methyl cellulose. Then I thought, okay, what am I trying to test for? And in this test, I'm looking at a couple of different properties. First, how well does the glue apply? So if I'm using a bore bristle brush, can I apply the glue without damaging the paper? And the second question was, okay, after 20 seconds, once I've laid the paper down on the board, is the paper still capable of being removed or does removing the paper damage the paper or the board itself? And so I thought, all right, let's dig in and figure this out. Now, before we get started, here are the first three papers I'm working with, 25 GSM Thai Unryu, 35 GSM Thai Natural Touch, and 55 GSM Lokta paper. On the back end, we have a 70 GSM Japanese Shiogami, a 90 GSM Mulberry Leather type of paper. It feels like leather, but it's not really leather. And finally, 130 GSM Thai Heavy Embossed Mulberry paper. Okay, so starting with the Thai Unryu 25 GSM, I applied some standard PVA and it was terrible. It was so hard to hold onto the paper, it kept wanting to crinkle on me because the PVA, standard PVA, is pretty thick and so it kept wanting to lift with the brush. So I'd say no, it didn't pass that test. Then I laid it down, waited 20 seconds, and when I tried to pull it away, it tore. So it really adhered itself to the board. The board was fine, but the paper itself, not so great. So then I took the second piece and I went ahead and applied the PVA with methyl cellulose and it went on great. So it glide across the tissue paper, no issues at all. I laid that piece down, waited 20 seconds on my timer. And then when I tried to lift, I had high hopes, but no, <laughs> it's still tore. So fail. Both the, the PVA and the PVA with methyl cellulose, not so great with 25 GSM tissue paper. All right, moving on to our second test subject, the natural touch, 35 GSM, so only slightly heavier. PVA standard failed the, the spread test. Once again, it wanted to lift it on me, a glue everywhere. It just, it wasn't great. After 20 seconds, I tried to lift it. Not so great here either. This one definitely failed. <laughs> it left some of it behind. So then I grabbed the methyl cellulose and PVA and I applied it. It went on great just glides on. It's really, really good for this type of paper. And then I laid it down and I waited another 20 seconds. After this one, I tried to lift it and you know what? It did really, really good. It came away fairly decent. It didn't tear the paper and it did not tear the board. So it passes. So our third subject is a Nepalese Lokta paper. Both of these went on really well, spoiler alert. The standard PVA was great. I had no issues, other than the size of the sample, which was small. And then when I went to lift it, sorry, it's off the screen. I had to actually move it up. There you go. When I tried to lift it though, it didn't do great. It actually lifted pieces of the board with it. So then I moved on to the PVA and methyl cellulose. Again, it was a winner in terms of application. And when I went to remove it, it actually did very well. It didn't ruin the paper and it didn't ruin the board. So we passed on that case too. Okay, moving on to the last three. When we applied both of these to the Chiyogami paper, they both apply really, really well. And then when I went to lift them, they both lifted really well too. So when it comes to PVA or PVA with methyl cellulose, the Chiyogami paper does great. And this is wonderful news because a lot of us use this type of paper, especially when we're just starting out. Okay, so another step up is this Mulberry Leather type paper. It's 90 GSM, and of course, both the PVA and the PVA with methyl cellulose applied extremely well. When we wait for 20 seconds, 
they both lifted really well too. So you can see here, the paper is still intact. Yes, are there some paper fibers left behind? Yes, but overall, the paper is not damaged. So I definitely gave it a passing score. As you can kind of see, the trend here is the thicker the paper, so the higher the GSM, the better it seems to do with either of these options. Now, the very last one was the most interesting. This is a Thai heavy embossed mulberry paper. It's 130 GSM, but it is very, very porous. So when I applied the PVA, it went on well, it stuck to the board well, and when I went to take it away, it came up well, but I was incredibly surprised to find that the PVA with methyl cellulose went on well, but did not lift well. So the PVA in methyl cellulose is thinner and the porousness of this material made it so that it just absorbed all of that liquid and all of that absorption just broke it down completely. It tore at the corner, it was soggy, it just fell apart. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, what I learned is that very delicate papers, 30 GSM or less, are gonna struggle with both of these PVA options. So if you are using a PVA on these types of paper, I would definitely suggest using a fingertip to apply. And then of course, make sure that you have the paper in position before you set it down because it will bond rather quickly. The second takeaway is that paper that falls into a GSM category of let's say 70 to 90 does really well with both of these options. And that's awesome news because so many of us get started with standard PVA and a lot of us love to use these like 70 to 85 GSM, you know, Chiyogami papers. And so you can use either one of the adhesives with these two, you're gonna be just fine. The final takeaway, which was the most interesting one for me is that heavier papers, so you're looking at 100, 130 GSM or higher, they're gonna do well with both of these adhesives, but porousness, definitely matters. So if the material you're working with has a really, really porous texture and it's going to be highly absorbent, I would definitely suggest using a thicker PVA, maybe even a Jade 403, in order to um, avoid having it completely, you know, absorb the liquid and ruin the paper entirely. Okay, that's it for my test. I hope that this was helpful. I left a table of information in the blog post if you want to go take a look. I welcome any questions or comments. I'm not a scientist, but I love running these little experiments. So if there's anything that you want to see, let me know in the comments and I would be happy to explore making a video for you. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care.